let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. reading is recorded in Isaiah chapter 61 starting at the 10th verse. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of our God. The word of the Lord. Be we will sing praise the Lord, O heavens adored, hymn 823.
The second reading is recorded in Galatians, the fourth chapter, starting at the fourth verse. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to all of you this day from God our Father and our newborn King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. These words are from today's first reading from the 62nd chapter of Isaiah. In Christ our blessed Lord and Savior, my dear sisters and brothers, breaking the silence. That is a fitting theme for this season in which we behold the dawn of our salvation and our ears become attuned to the sounds of heavenly melodies. Break the silence. In the first chapter of Luke, we are told how the aged priest Zechariah had silence imposed upon him when he doubted the message of the angel that he and his wife Elizabeth were to be the parents of a son. Zechariah lost his power of speech, and it was only when that child, John, was born, and on, on the day of that, that child's circumcision, that Zechariah was able to break his silence, and the first words out of his mouth were a song of praise to God, who has come to save and deliver his people. There was silence over the fields of Bethlehem on that holy night when Mary gave birth to a child and laid him in a manger. The silence was broken by the sudden appearance of an angel to startled shepherds with a most astounding message. I bring you good news of great joy. To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Silence was broken in, in the temple in Jerusalem 40 days after that child's birth when Mary and Joseph came to present him, fulfilling a requirement of the Mosaic law. The elderly prophet Simeon inspired by the Spirit, holding the child Jesus in his arms, burst forth in ecstatic utterance, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Again, in that temple setting, the silence was broken by an ancient woman, a prophetess named Anna, who came at that moment and began to praise God and to speak about this child to all who were expecting God's day of deliverance. Breaking the silence. Who has actually broken the silence? God himself has broken the silence. Out of the silence of eternity, God spoke a creative word. God said, let there be, and a universe, a cosmos, sprang into being. In our time and history, God has broken the silence. His eternal word has come to dwell among us, wrapped up in our fragile flesh, sharing our bloodstream and our fragile bones. God broke the silence and said, I, I am come to set my people free. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation is here. My 
sisters and brothers, Christ is present among us. And still we wait for that salvation to come in its fullness. That is why the prophet cries out for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. The ancient prophet had hopes and dreams for Zion, the holy city of God. And he just couldn't keep quiet about it. The messenger of the Lord is one who just cannot keep quiet. Many of us pastors and preachers, if we, should, if we could keep quiet, we would sure, certainly sit down and shut up. The prophet Jeremiah tells us that, that he had made up his mind to do that once upon a time. And he found that he wasn't able, for the word of God was burning like a fire in his bones. It would be so much easier if we could just keep quiet, if we did not care so deeply about things if we did not love so passionately the people to whom God has called and sent us. And yet our words and actions are frequently misunderstood and misinterpreted and not seen as flowing from a genuine love and concern. And being human, we also do make mistakes. But it is precisely because the Lord's messengers do care that they must proclaim both law and gospel, both divine judgment and divine grace. We have to heed the voice that comes from the summons in Isaiah 58, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, Declare to my people their transgressions to the house of Jacob their sins. Equally and even more so, we must heed the more gentle voice that urges from Isaiah 40, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and her penalty is paid, and she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. My sisters and brothers, what is the ultimate aim of all this crying out, both in judgment and in grace? It is that we, God's people, may truly become what we have been called by God to be. That we may reflect the light of Christ to all people and nations. That the world seeing us may say once again, see how they love one another and see how they love and show love to those around them. See the concern for justice and peace and the lifting of burdens and the, the easing of tensions between people. Then too, we must light a candle of truth and as the church sweep our own house, for St. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 4, 17, the judgment must begin in the very household of God. It is easier sometimes to, to raise a voice and point a finger at all the terrible things going on in the world, the dishonesty and the corruption. But in the church, too, uh, there is much injustice and double dealing, both in local congregations and in the wider body. Betrayal, discrimination, and abuse of power, and the truth crushed into silence. But as the saying goes, truth crushed to 
earth shall rise again. The day after Christmas in the calendar of the church was the feast of St. Stephen, deacon and martyr, the first martyr in the early Christian community of Jerusalem, the first to give his life for his testimony to Jesus Christ. Stephen could have saved his life, but he was one of those people who just could not keep quiet. And that was because he was a man full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Standing on trial before his accusers, he, he surely could have been a bit more diplomatic. But he looked them straight in the eye and said, and he told it like it was, uh, you can read his lengthy speech in Acts chapter 7. Uh, those who take part in our Sunday morning Bible study, in fact, uh, read that portion just a short time ago. And we know what happened to Stephen. He died under a rain of stones. But only after seeing a vision of Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and only after praying a prayer for the forgiveness of those who were killing him. Present as part of that lynch mob uh, was a young man by the name of Saul. But the risen Lord Jesus got a hold of Saul one day, knocked him down, and turned him around. And so he became the great apostle whom we know as St. Paul. Oh, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. My siblings in Christ, let our voices be raised in witness to the saving power that Christ has brought us. Let our hearts and voices be raised in prayer, mighty prayer of intercession to God for his church, for all its pastors and leaders, and for all its members, and for this world of ours in such bitter need, especially now, lift up our voices for the suffering people of Gaza, those driven forth from their homes, those who have lost their lives, those who are undergoing the bombing of their hospitals and medical facilities, those ordered to move on with no place to go, lift our voices in intercession for them and also for those who are on the other side of that conflict, that it may be brought to some resolution. Lift up our voices in prayer for the people of Ukraine, and the people of the Sudan and, and numerous other places that are sorely beset in these days of our world. Further along, in Isaiah 62, the prophet says, You who put the Lord in remembrance, take no rest and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it a praise in the Give the Lord no rest. Just keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking on heaven's door until God brings all his promises to fulfillment. No more sound of weeping, no more cry of distress, no more abused and battered children, no more injustice, no more exploitation and tyranny, no more slander, no more hate, bitterness, or prejudice, or discrimination. No more pain, no more sickness, no more death. And God's holy city shines with the brightness of the glory of God. Amen.
with the whole church. Let us confess our faith by using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may kneel if able. O come, let us adore Christ our Lord, and kneel before him with our prayers and supplications. Father, we praise you for your word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let Jesus fill us with grace and truth so that our joy may be complete. Lord, in your mercy. Provide the church with pastors, bishops, theologians who teach your people in all wisdom. By the gift of your spirit, let the church Every word and deed be in the name of Lord Jesus, to your glory and to the good of all whom he came to save. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are persecuted for Jesus' sake. Let the peace of Christ rule their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Make this congregation a company of the upright. Bind us together in love and peace. Let our lives display your redeeming power. Use us to draw our neighbors, friends, families to faith in your dear Son. Lord, in your mercy. Give our earthly leaders the holy fear that is in beginning of wisdom. Help them to study your works and perform your precepts. Let faithfulness uprightness, graciousness, and mercy. Guide those who take counsel for the nations. Bestow upon all peoples the blessing of food, shelter, health, honest work, justice, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Angels proclaim peace and goodwill at Jesus' birth, but many evils still trouble us. Shield and guide all who Risk their lives on behalf of others. Bring healing and comfort to the wounded and redemption to the fallen. Establish your peace among all so weapons of war may be sharpened into instruments of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Be gracious and merciful to all whose lives are shadowed by suffering in this season of light, including the ones we name either out loud or silent in our own hearts. We continue to raise up in prayer all those on our manual prayer list. And Darlene, Carl, June, David, Mary, Pat, Andrea, Jerry, George, William, James, Wanda, William, Lois, Edith, Harry, and also all those on our public prayer list to uh, which uh, the name of uh, 
Lisa's brother, Richard, should be added. And any others that we would like to name aloud or silent in Jesus. Lord, we lift up to you the people of Israel. Be with those who lost family and loved ones and the egregious attack. Lord, be with the hostages who are still held by that tsunami organization, the mosque. Lord, be with the soldiers as they seek to justly do their job. Lord, keep them safe and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let them see your salvation, dwell in your love, and glorify, and glorify you. Surround all whom you love them. Dear Father, we have bestowed on our beloved dead the fullness of your salvation, and we command them into your care. While we walk the pilgrim's path of life, let your dear son's spirit dwell with us richly, filling us with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. For these are the gifts of Christmas that shall last forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I give you my own peace, I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live in the name one God, Amen. I refer you now to uh, the recital of the Ten Commandments with confession and forgiveness. You may either kneel or remain standing. God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other. For me, you shall not worship any graven image. Lord, have mercy on us. Incline our hearts to keep your law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, have mercy on us. And incline our hearts to keep your law. You shall sanctify the holy day. Lord, have mercy on us. And incline our hearts to keep your law. You shall honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the earth. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts in your law. You shall not kill. Lord, Lord have mercy on us. Incline our hearts to keep your law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep your law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep your law. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep your law. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Lord, have mercy on us and incline your hearts to keep your law. You shall not covet your neighbor's spouse or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep your law. Let us confess our sins <clears throat> first reflecting silently in our hearts. <clears throat> oh God, our I have a Father. I confess to you that I have graciously sinned against you in many ways, not only by outward transgressions, but also by spirit of the desire. To which all honor to you. I do earnest repent and honestly sorry for those my offenses, and I beseech you with the great goodness of heaven to sin upon me. And for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
to forgive our sins and graciously keep my infirmities. Amen. Almighty God, we can get mercy as given his son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all our sins. Through his Holy Spirit, he cleanses us and gives us power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God who called us out of darkness into the splendor of his light. As a Paul ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. And also with you.
us pray. God of all creation, all you've made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world's sign of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Christ has taught 
Body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen.